Welcome to Home Business TV. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Kapmanison, your host. The online competition for attention and engagement has never been more intense, and the rapid rise of artificial intelligence, AI, has exponentially increased this challenge. To stand out from the crowd and compete, home business owners must get their business brand AI ready. Nothing is going to shock our business world more than artificial intelligence, and who better than Karen Tiber Leland to help us get ready for AI. Karen is founder of Sterling Marketing Group and best-selling author of The Brand Mapping Strategy, Design, Build, and Accelerate Your Brand. So greetings, Karen Tiber Leland. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Please say Thank hello. You. Nice to be here. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Let's see a copy of that book, of course. All right. There you go. Thanks. Karen has been interviewed by the Today Show, CNN, Fox News, and Oprah. She has presented at TEDx and to numerous elite colleges that I never stood a chance of getting admitted into. <laughs> Karen, let's get to know you better. How did you drift into the world of becoming an AI branding expert? Well, you know, I've been a branding and a marketing strategist for over a decade, and there really isn't any way to be in that field and not come to understand and experiment with and weave in AI because it's really becoming fundamental to the field of branding and marketing as well as other business fields, but it's becoming really essential to my field. And so about two years ago, I started to look into AI and what was happening. And of course, there's been a rapid, you know, exponential increase right. in it. But that's really how it started was I started to see the writing on the wall and I started to do some investigation and play around with AI. And so here we are today. I'm really working with companies and businesses and individuals, really helping them to start to prepare their brands for this coming AI revolution. It's like any smart business person, you got ahead of the power curve. I did. <laughs> Well, let's start at a simple fundamental level. Karen, why should any home-based business owner or what should they, you know, understand about AI for the most technically illiterate among us? Well, and I was going to say, I'm not a highly technical person, so I'm not a technologist. So for me, if I can understand it, anyone can. But essentially, you have to think about AI as things that we used to do uh, ourselves that can now be automated and done much faster. So one of my clients gave me a great analogy. It's like driving a car. You you couldn't get to the corner store as fast as your car could drive there, even if you ran super quickly, but you're the one that gives the car the direction. And so AI is like that car that can get certain things done super fast, but we still have to give it the direction. So a simple example that lots of people are using today is chat GPT as uh -huh. using it to start to write something. That doesn't mean that it can write everything for you without you giving it direction or making edits or changes. But I think that the most important thing for home business owners to understand is that regardless of the size of your business, there are AI tools that today you can bring in and use that help you run your business faster, more efficiently, more effectively. That's really the most important starting place. Yeah, one of the things that's bothering me about AI out there is everybody's kind of sensationalizing it right now, like it's going to turn create robots that, you know, destroy the world. And it takes you away from what you're talking about right there, about how it's, it's you know, look at it as a tool that can make you more productive and, uh, you know, increase the profitability of your business. Exactly. The marketability, the profitability, the efficiency, all of that. Well, Karen, you talk about a first AI step uh, is to teach uh, Google who you are. What exactly do you mean by this? Yeah, that is really important. So, for example, I have a, a new CEO client, and he came to me about working on his per, his brand, his CEO brand. One of the first things I did was I typed his name into ChatGPT, and I said, who is X? Now, he doesn't have a common name like Richard Smith that a million people have. He has a pretty unique name. And ChatGPT came back and said, I don't have enough information about this person to tell you who they are, right? Now, if you put my name into ChatGPT, it will come up with tons and tons. It'll come up with paragraphs about who I am and what I do. So what that, mean, what that tells me is that that person has not trained Google 
who they are, what their brand is. So remember, AI only is based on the content and the information that goes into it. It's the training that goes into it. So if Google doesn't know who you are, right, then, then AI won't know who you are. So search in AI won't be useful for you because Google doesn't know who you are. So what I mean by having Google, training Google about who you are across the internet is you have to show up in enough places across Google consistently so that Google knows who you are, what your brand is, what you stand for, what you represent, what you do for a living. That's what I mean by training Google. Google has to know who you are. And if you don't have that, you're going to be in trouble with AI because it's the same. Think of it as search. The search right. won't be able to find you or your company because it doesn't know you exist or it doesn't know what you represent. And that's really good. You've helped me understand this a little bit more. So somebody went on to chat and brought up Home Business Magazine. And it was a really nice, well-written summary of what you know of what we do. So that was just created by the content we already have out there. Exactly. But what that tells me is you've actually done a good job of letting Google know across the internet consistently who you are. Okay. You know, Karen, you discussed seven straightforward steps to prepare a business brand for AI. Let's let's take a look at a few of them. First, take a fresh look at your target audience. What are we uh, talking? What are we what are we talking about here? Well, it's it's the fundamentals of marketing and branding, right? You have to know who you're trying to reach and what their concerns are. That's critical in being AI ready. So AI can be a great source of gaining data and insights about your target audience so that you can start messaging and, and with content that resonates with them. But you need to first know, who am I actually trying to reach, right? Who is my audience at this time? You know, where does my audience stand in terms of what they're concerned about? Because then you can use AI to start to get data and to target that audience. Otherwise, if you go too broad, it's it's like the, it's like when we say to people, who's your customer? Everyone. Well, everyone's not your customer and you can't have a successful business. That's especially true with AI because you need to really hone it down and re refine it down to some very specific target audiences. Like for me, my target audiences are I have a couple of them, but one of them are CEOs of you know, mid cap companies. That's one right. of my target audiences. Another target audiences are entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs that run their own very successful businesses, but it's just them. You know, those are very specific target audiences as opposed to, well, you know, anyone in business. Very critical with AI. Now, can AI help you to yes. take a fresh look? I mean, so it's yes. always been a challenge to know who your target audience is. Yes. AI so can. it's always a sometimes it seems like it's always a stab in the dark. So yes. AI can yeah. actually help you. And there's uh, many comment. tools. ChatGPT can help you by asking questions and getting certain information. Uh, you can use something called pulsarplatform.com is useful as an excellent place to start. And there, again, there's so many of them. I'm just giving you a couple. Okay. You know, another point, uh, which uh, you touched on a bit earlier, is to consistently create an and an abundance of online quality content. Yes. Now, Karen, is so, there any, anything we can do to make that challenge easier? A hundred percent. This is one place where I feel like everyone needs to download ChatGPT and start using it uh, because what it does, and there's other ones as well. So you can, that's not the only one, but uh, byline.com is one, another one that's useful. But what it does is that it allows you to take content you've already created put it into the AI and ask it to rewrite it. So then you've got the content you've already created and you're able to reuse it and then edit it and change it and add things to it, right? You're able to put into chat GPT or something like byline, please give me an article on this. These are the points I wanted to make. These are the ideas I want to have be conveyed. These are the, you know, these are the feelings I want it to have and it will give you a place to start. So it makes creating content so much quicker and easier. Now there's a caveat to this, which is if you just say, for example, to chat GPT or to byline.com or byline.ai, if you just say to it, um, give me a thousand words on branding and marketing in the 21st century, it will spit something out for you. But then the problem you run into is everything sounds very polished, but everything has that same sort of voice. It won't right. have your voice. It won't be authentic. So like the more keywords and direction you can give it to give more fidelity, the better. Exactly. 
And even more than that, if you write a draft first yourself and give it the draft, or if you take mm -hmm. its draft and then you just use its draft, but then you edit and you make it your own. Okay. Now you're in more of a collaboration with the AI to start to write things. So of course I use AI for writing, but I don't just have it write everything for me. I right. give it direction. I correct the direction. I give it things I've already written and ask it to rewrite it. I take what it's written and I've edited it and I rewrite it and I add things to it. It's so an it's iterative process to, uh, iterative to get a good process. quality product. Exactly. And the, the 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 problem that we run into is thinking that people are people thinking they're just going to give it to chat GPT or to AI yeah. and let AI give it back. That will work, but you will mm -hmm. end up with a very bland, no voice brand that isn't going to help you. Your content will not help you if that's the level that it's at. Well, this must be going to drive college professors crazy. <laughs> well, they're starting to create. There are now things that they can create that they can yeah. run papers and things through to see was this created by ai yeah wow yeah i wish uh wish i had that when i was uh <laughs> cracking the books well karen you also stress the to monitor your online reputation you talked earlier about that ceo going in checking himself online but also to look at your online reputation. What are um, some, some success tips for doing this? Well, I would say keeping track of when you're mentioned online by whom and what they say is, is really essential in, in today's world. Now, there is a whole host of AI online reputation management tools that you can use. Um, but I'll tell you one thing that's really just easy, easy, easy. Set a Google alert on yourself. You know, go to you don't know how to find it, just Google Google Alert. Go to Google Alert, put your name in, put your company name in, and set an alert. And once a day, you will get an alert with anyone that's saying anything about you, what they're saying, so that you can stay on top of it. That's really, really important because you don't want to just let things go. You know, you want to be able to right. see what are people yeah, saying. Yeah, I don't want to get down a rabbit hole on this one because we could probably devote a, a podcast to it itself. But at a fundamental level, what what do you do if you know the first yeah, time you well, get a Google alert, someone's trashing you online? Yeah, it's at a fundamental level. The goal is to you know first of all, some things you can get, some things you can get taken off because the the place on the web sponsoring them or the place on the web hosting them has a resolution center where you can go and say, look, this person said this, it's not true for this reason. So sometimes that's an option, not always. Okay, so that's one option. But the other option is to put other content up that drives that down in the Google results okay. so that when someone Googles you, other things come up higher because most people are not going to search right. deep, 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 deep pages of content about you. So the more you drive that down by newer, more compelling content, the easier it is to get. Yeah, rid I of really it. want to stress that point. I hadn't thought about that at all um, before on online reputation management, but it's all about getting more content up and you push the bad content newer, down. Or in the newer, more key search engine optimized, keyword optimized, compelling content that drives the older content down. So don't, so don't take offense. <laughs> Focus on content. It's I mean, a, the truth is conflict. that the, the truth is that our legal system and our laws yeah, have. You're not, not going to get anywhere on that technology. Yeah. You know. Well, Karen, my favorite of your steps is to flip the focus. Oh yes, social media. social media. So how okay. do we uh, how do we flip that? Well, here's one of the biggest mistakes every people make. Almost everyone makes that they do their social and they if if they you first of all you should post three times a week. Um, that doesn't mean it all has to be your content. You can do you know re, from other people. You know you can repost from other people. But here's what happens: people post even if they post three times a week, and eighty percent of their content is about them their company, their business, oh, what they've yeah. achieved, their awards, what their promotions are, their business. And 20% is like information for the person looking at the social media. That information could be a quote or a picture or advice or an interesting study. You need to flip that. Really the most effective content marketing strategy and the most effective social media strategy is flipping it and having 80% of your content be useful information and only 20% be about your company, right? Because then you're starting to get a reputation again for what do you stand for online? You're training Google and you're training AI that you're an expert in X, that you're a thought leader in Y, that you're about this, you know. So are you just kind of getting it back to the fundamentals of content marketing? You know, it's got to be useful content and 
as much exactly. as we all think we're great <laughs> and everybody wants to read about us. 80% it's... should be useful, fun, right. interesting, entertaining content. So one of those, right? And it's interesting with AI because AI, just think about it like this, just when social media started happening, AI doesn't change the fundamentals of good business management. It doesn't change the fundamentals of good marketing and branding. It's just a tool that's using those fundamentals right. in a different way. So it's nothing like flipping the focus. You don't, there's nothing for you to actually flip. It's about you focusing on in your content and how you and, and well, it is about useful information. The focus because most people's focus is on their company, 80% yeah. interesting content. So I'm saying flip that focus to be 80% content right. and only 20% about you. And then the and social media will do the work if it has the right content, then exactly and you're giving it the right content. But exactly. Karen, there are there are some uh, are there any other key points from your seven steps to prepare for AI uh, that, that you would like to discuss today? But I think one of the most important things, and it's kind of step one, is stop avoiding AI. You know, I was at a professional dinner with about 30 CEOs a few weeks ago. And when I mentioned being AI ready, half of them got this sort of deer in the headlights look and they told me, oh, yeah, I, I can't even think about that. You know, in my opinion, that's a big, crazy mistake. You know, avoiding AI is only going to put you further behind us as time goes on. So unless you're planning on retiring in the next six months or you're going to close your business within the next year, you really need to face the impact of AI. And one of the ways to do that is that you need to start playing with it. You need to start learning about it. You know, that's why that's why I encourage people to get chat GPT or byline.ai because they're easy. They're an easy way to start playing with it and see what happens. I, I think it's like anything in life. You don't know anything about it. So you think it's a lot harder than what it is once you dig into it and start working with it. Right. And you and then you you'll start to understand how it functions. There's also a wonderful place called the Marketing AI Institute and they have lots of resources about educating yourself. So you have to start to educate yourself and not avoid it. But I think uh you know like a key point is, is you've got you've got to get out there and do it and get your hands dirty to, you do. to get familiar with it. You have to start using the tools. Well, Karen Tiber Leland, uh, what is one thing a podcast listener should do tomorrow morning to get ready for artificial intelligence? <laughs> I think we might have just talked about it, but what, what else besides, of course, well, buying it's, your book? It's the, it's the thing I said at the beginning, besides buying my book, it's the thing I said at the beginning, which is download ChatGPT. You can get the free version. Put your name in, put your company name in, and see what it comes up with. That's one thing everyone should start with. See what... Uh, Get get a baseline. See what's out there on you already. Exactly. Well, Karen, uh, we've reached the uh, end of our AI journey on today's podcast. Are there any other points about AI that you would like to share? Just that you, everyone should be finding a way, whether it's in a small way or a big way, to start using AI within their business and seeing the results. I think it's really important to actually start using it in your business. Karen Tiber Leland, thank you for joining us today I on the it. Home Business Podcast from uh, South Lake Tahoe. We, 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 you're, you're in South. I'd Lake. rather you say from uh, from New York. Oh, okay, Just from New York. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. To learn more about Karen Tiber Leland and her book, The Brand Mapping Strategy, please visit SterlingMarketingGroup.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and at our website, homebusinessmag.com. Subscribe to the newsletter, read the Home-Based Business Startup Guide. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Kapmanerson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then, make it a great home-based AI breakout day. Thank you for watching Home Business TV.